I found them to be really powerful. I said them out loud on my way to the tube this morning. I do yeah. it every day. And so I know they're powerful, but I have never thought why they're powerful and how that whole subconscious works. And I was just wondering if I could get your thoughts on that. Yeah, sure. Um, monks have been using affirmations forever, uh, mantras as they call it in Sanskrit. We, we use these beats to chant on. And a lot of times people say these are prayer beats, but we actually, yeah, you could say they're prayer beats, but we're actually more like affirmation or mantra beats. So we use these to actually program our subconscious. So as we chant on each bead, we chant an affirmation. I am happy or I'm confident. And we repeat the same chant over and over again. And there are 108 beads in here, so you can imagine how your subconscious gets programmed. And you memorize like 108 different chants. Oh, well, just one chant. One chant, okay. One chant over and over again. So okay. if it's I'm happy or I'm confident, you repeat it 108 times. Okay. So with affirmation, three ingredients are necessary. Concise choice of positive words, clear visualization, and a corresponding feeling. And most people don't understand this when it comes to affirmation. They just say the words, but no visualization and no feeling. So for example, if I say, I love apples, Concise choice of positive words. Now when I say the word I, my mind knows I'm talking about me. When I say the word love, my mind knows that he likes it, he enjoys it, he adores it, that's what love means to him. When I say the word apples, my mind gets confused. Because it's searching my entire hard drive, my entire subconscious from the day I was born for every occurrence of the word apple. Red apple, green apples, yellow apples, honey crisp apples, red delicious, Fuji apples, Washington apples, Apple MacBook Pro, Mac... MacBook Air, Apple Watch, iWatch, Apple iPhone, Apple iPad. What apples is he talking about? I have no idea, mm. right? So words alone is not enough. So that's why we have visualization. So when I say, I love apples, and I visualize a bright red apple, my mind goes, oh, that's what he's talking about. I love apples. He loves bright red apples. This okay. particular type of apple. It's a Washington or honey crisp apple, which has a little yellowish tint to it. Okay. So that's why words and visualization are important. Okay. And then feeling. Feeling is emotion. Emotion is energy. And you know the famous scientist Tesla? Well, yeah. Not personally, but obviously through reputation. He had this beautiful saying which kind of encapsulates uh, Hindu philosophy really well. He said that um, to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So to define the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Everything is made up of energy that's vibrating at a certain frequency. Right? So the chair has molecules and atoms that are vibrating at a certain frequency, binding it together, creating a certain matter. So what we believe is that if you, your subconscious is filled with patterns that are vibrating at a certain frequency, anger could be vibrating at 20 kilohertz, happiness at 30 kilohertz, I don't know what the numbers are, I'm just making stuff up in terms of numbers, but everything is vibrating at a certain frequency. And if you can go into your subconscious and create a pattern, infuse it with energy that's vibrating at a certain frequency, you can attract things of a similar nature to it. So if I go into my subconscious, I repeat an affirmation which has a concise choice of positive words, clear visualization, I infuse a feeling into it. What does it feel like? Right? And it starts to vibrate in my subconscious with that, pat, uh, that frequency. Now it attracts anything of a similar uh, vibration or similar frequency towards it. So I'll give you a very simple example. Boy dates go. They go out for two years. They have a great intimate relationship. They break up. Boy hangs out with his friends to get over the relationship. The girl does you know, chocolate, shopping, wine therapy with her girlfriends for six months. Finally says, I'm over him. She starts dating again. Who does she attract into her life? Quite often a similar guy. You know, different person, but with the same vibration. Same type of person. I've had so many people come up to me, boys and girls, say I keep attracting the same type of person into my life. Common thing I hear all the time. Why? Because you date, John dates Sue. They have two years of, of a relationship. Sue has vibrations that are experiences, emotional experiences that are vibrating at the frequency of John in her subconscious, they break up. Those experiences are still vibrating at the frequency of John in her subconscious. Now she goes to date, who does she attract? Another John named Peter mm. of a similar frequency. 
And that just happens. So energy doesn't know how to discriminate between what's good for you and what's not good for you. It's just energy. So anything of a similar frequency gets drawn to you. So if you know how the subconscious works and you know how to program it using affirmations with a clear choice, concise choice of positive words, clear visualization, and a corresponding feeling, feeling being the most important component because it's the actual energy that attracts, then you can draw, bring into your life anything you want. Continue watching this fascinating conversation for free by clicking on the link below to visit our website, learn from the best minds in the world, and connect with a community of passionate people building the best versions of themselves. Just click on the link below, and I'll see you on the inside.